Jane, the only reason that you've come back and experiencing all those filters is so that you can understand what we're feeling. Yeah, right? I didn't understand in the first century what you were feeling. Really? Yeah. Even though you were human. Yeah, but what happened in the first century was that I, I had um, I had an existence that began with the clearing out. In, in the spirit world, there's a process that, in fact, all of you at some point will probably go through or you will observe. And, oh, hang a sec, no, probably most of you are not ever going to exert, uh, go through it personally because you'll probably deal with all your emotions here. But, but many of you may observe this occurring after you've passed. And that is, there is whole areas of the spirit world which are devoted to the healing of emotion, emotional baggage within the soul of an individual that's caused by everything that's outside of their control. Right? And in the book of Robert James Lees called Through the Mists, I think it is, there's a description of what's called the magnetic chorale. And there's a chapter on that if you want to read it. And it's a description of what actually happens to the souls of people who have been damaged quite badly by the environment around them without any of their own emotions being involved. And what happens is groups of people get together and actually heal that person of all the emotional damage that they were not responsible for. Being murdered. Yeah. Right. And so be careful. Some of the I'm not talking about. I'm talking about mostly the chi a lot of the child and stuff. Right? Mm -hmm. right. It's not stuff that happens as adults because remember a lot of that is due to the laws of attraction, right? So we're talking about a lot of the childhood stuff being released. Mm -hmm. So what actually happens to them is that, is that a lot of that childhood stuff that caused all the damage gets released. And only the things that you made decisions about that caused damage remains within you that you need to deal with. Right? Now, that process happened to me as soon as I was born in the first century. A group of spirits got together and actually did that for me in the first century. Why did they do that? Because they, dis they, they had been asked by God to do those things for me. They had feelings from God to do those things. Mm. Were they like celestial? No, they were six fear spirits. <coughs> there were no celestial spirits in existence at that stage. Is that, was that called the virgin birth? Yeah, what they call the virgin birth. Obviously, wisely, but yeah, obviously there was no virgin birth. Of course, yes. Right? But, but um, once I was born... These spirits got together and cleared away the emotional damage from my parents right at that point. Are you the only one that's ever happened to? Yeah. Yep. How did they do that, though, if they weren't connected to God? Because I thought you said six fear spirits aren't connected to God. Well, I'm saying they're not at one with God. Oh. But they can have a desire to talk to God and so forth, just like any other person. So do they get messages from God? Certainly they did. Yeah. And certainly they still do. I see. Yeah. Yeah. But so they're not at one with God. There's a the difference never... between being connected and... Well, they're, not, they're connected in the sense that they can hear a message from God to do mm. something. Mm. Just like we can. Just like you can, whether you're connected to God or not. Mm. Right? You can hear a message from God and do something about it. And often things happen in your life right now where this actually doesn't intuition. occur. Right? Mm. Where you trust your intuition and follow that. Mm. Or, still... Sorry. Sorry. I was going to continue with yeah. the story, if that's all right. Yeah. Yeah. So there were no celestial spirits at that time. There was no seventh sphere at that time. Mm -hmm. right? There was no seven, eighth, ninth, tenth, eleventh. None of those spheres existed at that time. None of those dimensional spaces. And what happened was, the, once those emotions were cleared, then I was <coughs> left to develop just with what actually happened from that point on. And in that process, I didn't understand... I could feel everyone else's emotions, right? I could feel my own mother's emotions. I could feel my father's emotions. I could feel my friend's emotions and so forth from a very, very young age. But I could never understand from the point of view of having experienced them myself. You follow that? Like, because it wasn't a part of my experience. So of all the spirits in the spirit world, I have been the spirit who's been the least educated, <laughs> right, about what it's actually like to feel, from a condition of error, feel and process emotion. So this makes you a better teacher now. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, be than in the first century. yeah, because in the first century, I could feel all of their emotion and I could reflect back at them what was going on. But I had never experienced what it's like. So there was always this feeling that people had around me that I didn't understand really. 
that I didn't really get them. Yeah, yeah. So right? you can't really meet them right where they are then. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's right. And that's, uh, my soulmate could. My soulmate didn't have the same experience as myself and she could. And so that even throughout our spirit life, that was a major thing for me. For me, trust because I trusted her, a lot of her, her direction and, and her feelings about people because I knew that I hadn't had the same experience she had. Right? So I was actually severely limited by that particular event, in a way. So while I understood everyone's emotions, I did not personally experience them ever. And so therefore, how can I really understand? But you had a lot, lot more love than everybody, though, didn't you? In yeah, but that was just a reflection mm -hmm. of my father's love, which, yeah. which is obviously a, a, a huge thing, which you know when you're feeling that yourself, like, you know how powerful that love is. And obviously I displayed love in every circumstance because obviously I was at one with God. However, the feelings that a lot of people had when I did that were, were feelings of anger or resentment. Mm. Uh, this is recorded in the Bible, a lot of this, right? Mm -hmm. How many times do people get angry and resentful with me? I would say a truth. Oh, you're a hypocrite. Mm. Uh, what's a hypocrite by definition? A liar. A person that says one thing and does another, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Well, the majority of the Pharisees that I spent time with were that. Yeah. So I just said that truth. How did they take it? <laughs> Not very well. <laughs> Not very well. So, hey, just one question. Like, so being human with our emotions and baggage, which like some of us have done workshops and etc, etc, etc to heal, and it's you know been such a hard journey for me anyway, personally. Yep. Yep. Is this one of the most difficult um, experiences in the universe? Like to be human and with this emotional damage. The most difficult experience, I believe, in, in the universe is to actually live in a state of error yeah. and come into truth. Mm. That is so difficult because I believe my error to be truth. Mm. And that, that is a. And see, in the first century, I wasn't faced with that issue. Like, as I. If you can imagine, you have no error within you, just imagine that for a moment. <laughs> so, yeah. there's, so there's no emotion of anger, there's no emotion of sadness, there's no emotion. You've only got emotions that are happy, blissful type of emotions. You're not at one with God yet, right? You're not at one with God yet, but you feel these emotions constantly where you're just happy most, all the time you're happy, everything in your life's going pretty smooth, law of attraction's working great because you've got none of those causal emotions within you. Imagine that for a moment. And then someone comes along, like AJ, and says, oh, you can decide to be at one with God, and this is how you do it. Are you going to find it easy or hard? I reckon you're going to find it easy. Because you've got no emotional baggage. You're not coming from a position of error. You're coming from a position of truth. The only thing you need to learn is humility. You only need to learn to seek love and seek truth from God. That's all you need to learn. Those three basic things... You're already doing the third, which is feeling all of your emotion. 